So in this video we're going to determine whether one polynomial is a linear combination of a given set of polynomials. And this is going to work the same way that it did when we uh, showed that uh, uh, vectors in R2 were linear combinations of a given vector, when vectors in R3 were a linear combination of a given vector, and in the previous video when we, when we showed that one 2 by 2 matrix was a linear combination of a set of a given set of 2 by 2 matrices. So if we want to demonstrate that this polynomial is a linear combination of these two polynomials, or, or perhaps it's not a linear combination, we need, to, we need to identify whether it is or not, what we're going to do is look for scalars a and b such that a times the first given polynomial plus the scalar b times the second given polynomial. We want to see if those will uh, build the polynomial 8x squared minus x plus 4. If this polynomial can be built from these two polynomials using uh, scalar multiplication. So if we can write this as a linear combination of the other two, then we know that this um, then, then we'll know that this uh, is a linear combination. If we can't find a and b that work, then we know it's not a linear combination. So the process is distribute the a into the parentheses, distribute the b into the parentheses, and then group things based on like terms. So if we focus on the x squared terms first, we would get a times x squared plus b times 2x squared needs to equal 8x squared because it'll be the sum of the x squared terms that generate the x squared term. So if we do ax squared plus b times 2x squared and factor the x squared off, we'll get a plus 2 times b quantity times x squared needs to add up to give us the 8x squared term. And what what that means is that the coefficient on the x squared here, the a plus 2b, has to give us 8. So we get this equation right here. This is equation 1. a plus 2b equals 8. And then if we do the linear terms next, so we focus on the linear terms, the x terms, we know that a times minus 2x plus b times 3x need to add up to give us the minus x and then we can factor the x's off and if we do that we'll get this here. Here x is factored off so we get minus 2 times a and minus 2 times a plus 3 times b times x need to add up to give us the opposite of x and what that means is practically speaking that negative 2a plus 3b will need to equal the negative 1 so we get a second equation right here and then we can deal with the constant terms finally so a times minus 1 is minus a, plus b times 6 is 6b, and those need to add up to equal the constant term 4. And that gives us equation 3. So we wind up with three equations in two unknowns, a and b, and that means we can construct an augmented matrix and solve it to figure out what a and b are if a and b exist, if there is actually a solution. So from here, the co we would get 1, 2, 8. So we get 1, 2, 8. This one would give us negative 2, 3, negative 1. So negative 2, 3, negative 1. And from here, we would get negative 1, 6, and 4. Negative 1, 6, and 4. So we have the A and B column. This is an augmented matrix. And we just uh, put it into reduced row echelon form, either by hand or we use a computer algebra system to do that. And once we get it into reduced row echelon form, we interpret the reduced row echelon form to see if solutions exist or not. And in this case, they do. A is equal to 2. And from row 2, B is equal to 3. And that tells us that 2 times x squared minus 2x minus 1 plus 3 times 2x squared plus 3x plus 6 will add up to give us the 8x squared, that's in a horrible spot, the 8x squared minus x plus 4. This should be sitting up here, but there's a matrix in the way.